Today we're going to have a look at the wire plan central heating system. I'm going to try and keep it as simple as possible and I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, let's have a look. The Y plan has many similarities to the S plan central heating system. It's still a series of switches. The main difference is that you only have one valve and there's also a function on the programmer for hot water off. But apart from that, it's pretty similar. You've got power in, you have a programmer, you have two thermostats, you have one valve, and you have the boiler and pump which sends on the water to your heating and hot water. So let's have a look at the actual three port valve. This is bought as a unit, it's hardwired, you don't wire this unit. And like the S plan valve, the two port valve, each wire has a particular function. The blue is a neutral, that's a neutral to the motor. The CPC, that's a protective conductor because it's often a metal case. You have the output wire, which is orange, and that actually sends on the switch lag to the boiler and pump. And you have two input wires, the grey and the white. And depending what power is on these two wires, depends what the motor does and what position it goes to. Of the three pot valve is to control the flow of water to your hot water and your heating. And the valve has three ports. A and B, this is where the water comes in, and it can either go to B, which is off to your hot water, or to A, which is your heating. And depending on the position of this rubber ball in the valve, depends what goes through. In the central mid position, water can go through to A and to B. If it's in this position here, water can only go through to your heating. If it's in this position here, water can only go through to your hot water. So the valve has two forces acting upon it. It has a motor and it has a spring. The spring is there to keep it in its default position here, which is blocking off flow to the heating. So therefore, B in the default position is always open and the flow of water to your hot water is prioritized. The flow of water is always open in the default position. The spring keeps it there. It's only when the motor is energized by power on the grey or the white, that this ball moves to its three different positions. If we have 230 volts on the white and grey, that is heating only. So we have 230 volts on these two wires that go through the various switchings, affects the motor, and it pulls the switch right over and blocks off port B. So only water can flow to port A. So that is heating only, powered by 230 on your white and grey. If you have power on the white only, the white energizes the switches, moves the motor, but it stalls in the center position. It stays here. There's quite a bit of electronics that causes it to happen. We're going to go through that in a, a greater detail. But basically, if there's power on the white, the motor goes to the central position and you get water flow to your hot water and to your heating. It's really useful to know that the position of the motor doesn't just affect the position of the ball in the valve, it also affects the switching inside the three-port valve. When the motor is de-energized, it's in its default position, held against port A, so there's water going to port B. This is a switching arrangement, common to one on both switches. When the motor moves round to the midpoint, the switching is this arrangement, common to two and common to one. And in position three, when the motors come all the way across, the final position, as far as the motor can go, the switching's in this position, both commons to two, in both switches. And that affects the flow of power onto the boiler and pump. Okay, so that's your switching. So we'll start with the programmer off. The programmer off, there's no power to the motor. So the motor's in its default position, held by the spring, at port A, blocking off port A, but port B is still open for hot water. The hot water off command is a live command, so that will send 230 onto the wiring centre and onto the tank stat and onto the three port valve. But because the other switching isn't in place, it won't send on a feed to switch on the boiler and pump. You could still get you still get hot water because the valve's in the hot water open position. If you've got a tank full of hot water, that can still get through the valve. But the valve isn't powered, the boiler's not powered, so it won't be reheating water and it won't be doing any room heating. Um, so that's what happens when the programmer is in the off position. So 
the programmer is only asking for hot water. And if you recall, the three port valves default position is hot water only. So we don't need to energize the motor because the valve is where we want it. Port B is open. All we need to do is energize the boiler and pump. So let's see how we do that. So from the programmer, let's send the feed through the wiring sender onto the tank thermostat. We always go through a thermostat because we don't want to heat water unnecessarily. If the tank's cold, it'll heat it up. If the tank's hot, it won't. It's calling the heat in this case. So it's going to send the power straight onto the boiler and pump. Start pumping the water around the system because the valve's already open. The water can pass through and go on to your hot water. So that's how that all works. And if you decide that the tank thermostat decides it's satisfied, it'll take the feed, the switch feed from one to two. So that'll switch off the boiler and pump. And this feed will just go onto the two port, three port valve where it'll just sit there. It's not connected to anything because of the switching arrangements. So the hot water will go off if the tank, tank thermostat is satisfied. So that's your hot water. Okay, so the programmer is now calling for heating and hot water. So we need to move the the valve, ball valve, into the mid position. We need to start the boiler and pump. Let's see how we do that. Let's take it back to the default position. We'll follow the heating first. Heating comes through the programmer, through the room stat, energizes the white wire. The white wire energizes the motor, and it also energizes the common in switch too. So we'll do the motor first. The motor will move round. That'll go to the mid position. The ball's being dragged over by the motor. And you'll notice that the switching has changed to this position in switch one. So it's now common to the grey. But the grey isn't energised, so that's not going to do anything. So the motor is going to stop in this position. But the white wire is also going onto the common. And the common will go through these electronics and it stalls the motor in this position. So the motor is stalled in this position, being fed by this diode and these resistors. It provides enough power, DC power, just to keep that motor stuck where it is. But you'll notice here, there's no switching on the orange out to the boiler and pump. So how does the boiler and pump get switched on? That's done by the hot water. So we'll follow that flow. Hot water comes through wiring centre into the tank thermostat. Tank thermostat's calling for heat. And like before, that sends the power on straight to the boiler and pump. So the boiler and pump is energized via the tank thermostat and the ball is held in place by the wiring, the white wire from the room stat. So that's how the heating and hot water is controlled. Right, so the programmer only wants heating now. So we do need to energize the motor. We need to move the motor across from A to B, block port B and up port A. So how do we energize this motor and switch on the boiler? Let's follow the flow of power. We start with the heating. Heating leaves the programmer, it's calling for it. Through the stat, if the stat's calling for heat, it'll send the feed on, power on, onto the white wire, which will go to this connection in the three port valve, this little switch here. You'll notice it also goes onto this common connection here in the other switch. But we need the grey and the white wire. So this is why we have the hot water off this sends the hot water off feed to this connection here. Also goes onto the tank stat, but we don't need to worry about that. It's common here, so this feed will go on to this position in this switch. So when the motor is in the default open position, the switching is like this. So that's going to energize the motor. The motor is going to start turning around, start pulling this ball across. When it gets to the mid position, this switch flicks over, and now it's getting its power from the grey. And that'll go onto the motor and that'll motor this all the way around until it gets to its final position and then this will energize this connection here and then because this white wire is still energized it will send that feed on the orange onto the boiler and pump so that's how your heating only is controlled one of the quirks of the three port valve is the hot water off um, when you've got 230 on the grey only known as the last port of call. It just powers the grey wire, which can have a bit of an unwanted effect on the three port valve, it, it, whereas the motor is constantly energised. So in this situation, everything's been switched off when the valve is in the heating only position, so the motor is being pulled right across. The switch is in this configuration here, 
it's it's right at its full extent the motor so this is a switching arrangement so if you follow the flow hot water will be energized hot water off is energized the gray wire common to the wiring center goes on to switch one here and you see it follow flows onto the motor so it's going to keep on providing more power to that motor for as long as it's in this setting hot water off and so this this motor is just going to sit there using a little bit of power it's only a few watts it's not a big deal but it's it's just a strange idiosyncrasy of this setup and it'll sit like that until the settings change and the valve moves to another position so that's your last port of call when you've got 230 on gray just means it stays in its last position and when you're in the last port of call the boiler and pump will also not be on because there's no demand for it hot water that's off so that won't be sending a signal to the boiler and pump heating's off so that won't be sending a signal to the three port valve so in the last port of call the boiler and pump will be off okay thanks for watching really appreciate that and i hope you found it some use if you've got any comments love to hear from you okay and if you think about subscribing i'd appreciate that too all right cheers now bye